Hey everyone, I hope this finds you doing well. Today we're going to be talking about how to interpret derivatives in context, right? So we spent a lot of time talking about this idea of a derivative, right? We spent, about, we spent time talking about um, what it means, where it comes from, how to calculate it using our different rules, and how to apply it to help us solve some more complicated problems, right? So things like optimization, curve sketching, and the next big one we'll talk about is related rates, right? So now, Let's take a step back and sort of see how do we interpret these things in the context of a real world problem. Right? So let's go ahead and dive right into it with an example. So we've got this example here. Um, a toy factory is selling these little mechanical robots. Right? And we're going to define this function r of c, right? this function r of c, to represent the number of robots sold. Right? We're going to represent the number of robots sold uh, where c, the input, that goes into this uh, is the cost of each robot in dollars, right? So we've got this, uh, well, now we've got this exposition out of the way, uh, I could ask you a couple of things based on the situation, right? So I could ask you, for example, what does R, of C, R prime of C represent? Of course, this being the derivative, what does that actually represent, right? I could also ask you then, what are the units of R prime of C, right? Now, these are things that might not be at the tip of your tongue, right? But we do under we do know how to solve these. We do know how to do this, right? So let's go ahead and uh, revisit some older concepts so we can view these things in a slightly different light. Cool. So let's go through some reminders here, right? So we know that the derivative can be interpreted in two key ways, right? We can interpret it as an instantaneous rate of change, an instantaneous rate of change, right? We can also interpret it as the slope of the tangent line. Right? There's just uh, some review there for you. But we know we can interpret the derivative in these two ways. Right? Um, you can also use the limit definition form, but we're not worried about that here. Uh, now, what do these things tell us? Well, they tell us, right, they tell us a change in y, or let me just put that in parentheses, over a change in x. Right? So for some function, generally speaking, if we have some function um, y equals f of x, Right, some function of x, our derivative, these things all tell us what we call dy over dx. Right? It's a change in y over a change in x. The reason we have a d is just to interpret that it's a very tiny change. Right? It's a very tiny change in y over a very tiny change in x. That's where the, this d comes from, as opposed to like a delta, which we normally use. Right? So this represents a change in y over a change in x. And of course, y and x can be whatever we want them to be. y is just our dependent variable, x is our independent variable, right? All right, so now let's come back here and see if we can use our knowledge to, to take on these questions, right? So remember, r prime of c, right, is the derivative of r of c, so it represents, right, this is the same thing as dr over dc, a tiny change in r over a tiny change in c, right? So this basically tells us, right, if we put this in words, it tells us the instantaneous rate of change of r, right, as a function of c, right? Um, if we were to put this in terms of the actual quantities here, as opposed to just the functions, this would tell us um, the change in r, this would be like um, number of robots sold. Right? As a function of uh, this would be our cost. Right? So basically, it tells us this basically dr prime of c, the derivative, is telling us the instantaneous rate of change of like or how fast the number of robots sold is changing as a function of cost, right? So that's what this is telling us. What are the units of r prime of c? Well, remember, we're looking at a change in r over a change in c, right? So up here, we have that little change in r, and down here, we have a little change in c. So the units of this are going to carry, right? So on top, we have the units of r over the units of c. Right? 
So this is now going to be, um, we have number of robots sold over, um, over the cost or the or dollars. And this is always going to be true, right? Your instant, your units of R prime of C are always going to be the units of your independent variable or, or units of your dependent variable over independent. So this R right here is our quote unquote Y and the C right here is our quote unquote X, right? So this is always going to hold true. The units of your derivative are always going to be the units of y, your dependent variable, over the units of x, your independent variable. All right? Awesome. All right, so now let's see if we can challenge ourselves a little bit more with this next extra credit question here, right? So let's say that r prime of 10 is negative 3. So in other words, I'm telling you what the derivative is at one specific uh, value of c, right? So how can we interpret this in words? So let's quickly go ahead and just make sure we understand where each piece is coming from, right? So this guy right here is just gonna be C, right? It's our C value that we're plugging in, and the units of this is gonna be in dollars, right? This guy right here is a derivative, right? It's um, dr over dc, and the units of this is gonna be, remember, units of r over units of c, which is going to be robots sold per dollar, right? So just reminding ourselves of the units there. Now let's see if we can go ahead and interpret this, right? So now we can, so we, this tells us, right, that, okay, when the price or when the cost is dollars 10, Right? When the cost is dollars ten, right, the rate, the rate at which we sell robots, right, the rate at which we sell the robots is changing at um, minus three. Uh, robots per dollar. That's how you do that, right? So what's it saying? When the cost is 10, at this instant, right? At this particular instant, when the price is dollars 10, the rate at which we we're selling robots, right? This, the rate at which we're selling robots, that's R, is changing at minus three robots per dollar. In other words, if we were to change the price ever so slightly around this, maybe we go, go up to like eleven dollars or ten fifty or uh, nine fifty, then we would we would our rate of sales would change at approximately this rate, at this rate. That's what this is saying, right? One last note here, and that is to pay very very is to be very careful about the vocabulary you use in this last part here, right? So I use the word changing, which does not come with any kind of sign associated with it, right? You could also rewrite this as decreasing, right, at three robots per dollar, right? You're decreasing at three robots per dollar. You could also say it like that, but notice here I've no longer carried that negative sign, right? Because the negative sign is already implied in this word decreasing, right? So be very careful with the vocabulary that you use when writing these things out, right? Changing does not carry any implicit sign with it, so we can just go ahead and use the exact thing that we have here. But if you are using the word decreasing or increasing, remember those words carry an implicit sign with them, right? So it doesn't mean, it doesn't make sense to say that you're decreasing at minus three robots per dollar. You wanna say you're decreasing at three robots per dollar because that minus sign is already carried over. And yeah, that brings us to the end of this video. If you found this video helpful, please do like, share, subscribe, leave a comment and check out some other videos. See you next time!